Oh, and by the way, it's pretty hot here. I think Singapore is more or less about 88 miles north of the equator. And there is about 70 to 80% humidity happening today. So the good news is that 70 to 80% humidity and that sun is perfect for so many of these tropical plants. They're just growing out of the ground everywhere prolifically. Something that we don't get in the Northern Hemisphere. This is a resource center for landscapers and gardeners. So what we're probably gonna see is like maybe different aspects of plants planted together. This is beautiful, the terracing and the landscape in the distance. You're seeing a lot of like kind of grayish green, silvery hues. I think what we'll probably do is stop at the vertical garden facility that they have to see some of their installations there. This is an elephant climber. It has really fuzzy leaves with the new leaves that are just coming in. You can see that they're folded in half. And then they eventually open up like this. You can see it has a nice white downy undersurface here on the leaves. This is really beautiful. If you take a look over here on the right, you'll see some aglionemas. This one's a really interesting one. It has this grayish hue. It's probably a cultivar. I can't imagine that that's a species. Here's some other aglionemas. You can see that they have their inflorescence coming right now with their spathe and the spadex right here. These look like a type of um, Thai cult cultivar of aglionemas. They're not as prolific as the uh, light green ones, as you can see. So this looks like a calathea. Let's see the cultivar name. It's called silver plate calathea. Now I've seen these definitely before in botanic gardens, but this is a type of cultivar, but you see, Typical with the Marantaceae family, oftentimes you have a dark purple aubergine underside and a colorful top. So that one's pretty neat. I also see some Sansevieria in there, some snake plants kind of growing up in the distance. I think this one is called um, Calathea openheimia, but I could be uh, off by that. I've seen this a little bit more in Europe and not necessarily in the US yet. And this is, I think, Moses in the Cradle, it's called. It's a type of Tradescantia, I believe. Oyster plant, I think sometimes it's, it's called that name too. Also has these really striking purple undersides and dark green tops. So we're gonna swing around here and look at the vertical garden area. I have a vertical garden and I love to see how other people do vertical gardens. And what's awesome about this is that they are probably showcasing here different types of vertical gardens that people could use in their landscape or on their buildings, which is important because Singapore has become a place where there is a ton of landscaping in the urban complex. Just looking at this one without knowing much information about it, this looks like it's set in containers and has this type of drip irrigation, maybe fertilization system. So it looks like the, the plants that they're growing in here are kind of doing so-so, but it looks like they have quite a bit of Tillandsia usnoides and other types of Tillandsias as well. Some ferns, some Deschidia right here, which looks a little chlorotic. Chlorotic meaning like the leaves are starting to yellow a little bit, but that's part of being here in Singapore against direct sunlight. They have some ficus deltoidea right here. And of course, some beautiful orchids that seem to be doing just mighty fine. But this one, again, looks like it has some kind of steel casing, some pots that could be movable, and in some type of irrigation system as well. This next one looks like it's not movable. It seems to be very similar to, there's a green wall in a cafe that's very near to me. And this looks like it has some felted pockets. So these are plants that are probably planted right into these felted pockets. And then you'll see this kind of uh, irrigation and fertilization system going right into those felted pockets. And you'll notice some of the plants kind of growing just right out of here. These uh, philodendron climbers seem to be doing exceptionally well on this wall, as well as this like devil's backbone right here, which is, a, I think it's a type of euphorbia. 
But again, I could tell that these, these walls get a ton of light because you're seeing all this bleaching in these plants. They would probably prefer to be in something that's less direct. This one's an interesting one. It seems to be doing well. I don't know if they've replaced any of the plants in it. And that is common. Like I have my vertical garden and I often swap plants out sometimes because they get too big. Sometimes they die back. Um, but this one seems to be doing well. So this is like individual plant pots that look like they could be taken out. So what's cool about that is when they're movable, you can change up the look of the green wall, which is really neat. So if you wanted to take these variegated chaffleras out and you know create a rim of variegation around, you could actually technically do that, I think, with this wall. Now, it looks as if this is something that's probably better for outdoors or because you'll see that the water is probably watering it from the top down because the water is dripping down into the trough below and you would just want to be comfortable that if you had this indoors that you'd have a trough that kind of cycles the water or if it was outdoors that you don't mind the water dripping off to the bottom. The first vertical gardens that I've ever seen were designed by Patrick Blanc who's a French designer and uh, he does a lot of this type of vertical gardening in the sense that the watering is from the top down. I have something that's similar to my vertical garden, except it doesn't just drip because obviously we're in an apartment building. So the, it, it's in troughs and the irrigation system remains within the troughs itself. This one also looks like it's doing well, and this is not within pots. This looks like it's another type of felted plus netted system. So it looks like there's felt behind here and that there is this netted system to maintain the plants inside. So it looks like the net is on top and it's cut here. It's got these cuts where the plants actually emerge. So it's creating this kind of pocket-like atmosphere and this is one of those things where it might be actually a little bit easier to grab the plant and change it up, but this one seems to be doing just fine. Also looks as if it, it has a top-down watering system here. Oh yeah, here's some irrigation. So this could be a fertilization system right here, right here, but it looks like the water is dripping down from the top to bottom. This wall seems to be doing extremely well too. I'm not quite sure what um, plant this is. Got some philodendrons, got some variegated plants right here. I'm not sure what kind of those are. And you get some devil's backbone up there, which seems to be doing extremely well. I think because you're seeing these walls and it's in extreme sunlight and actually some of these succulent varieties seem to be doing a lot better than some of the foliage varieties. Uh, that's not something that would probably do well in my home because I don't have enough light, but it's a good lesson learned in um, a place like this. Next one over, it looks like they're using some steel casings. And I think what we're seeing here is that this could be a great wall. You can move around and it's probably a good epiphytic wall because all they really are growing right here are more epiphytic plants. So this could make sense, I think, in some situations, especially if you're just growing epiphytes. This one also looks pretty similar. They have um, steel casing, but it's in blocks of four. And you start to see like some of these felt pockets coming out. Looks like some moss has started to grow in some of these pockets as well. This looks like a lipstick plant. Super cool to see this. And you could also get a sense of like what, what plants are growing well in these conditions and in these environments what wall would potentially work better for you, whether you're indoors, outdoors, whether you're getting full sun, whether you're getting a little bit of shade. Here's another wall. It looks as if they are growing in troughs. This is a little bit more similar, I think, to my wall in the sense that they have these troughs that are attached to the base of the wall. And you get some ferns and you have some monstras here. It's a little wild looking. And then if you see this wall, it looks like its own encased system, all plastic, has like these individual components right here. But every single one 
has a line of fertilization and irrigation. You can't really see those from when you step back, but when you get up close, you could see it. Lots of different styles of plants. I think this is a pothos enjoy, some aspleniums, which is the bird's nest ferns, and some philodendrons and some cryptanthus actually up there as well, which seems to be thriving. And again, this is kind of my assumption. We're really heavy in the sun right here. And the plants that are doing the best are the ones that can receive a lot of light, the more succulent kind of varieties like the cryptanthus and, uh, and the uh, devil's backbone over there. Very cool to see all of them side by side. What a really wonderful resource they have here. So guys, what did you think about those green wall constructions at Hort Park? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're constructing green walls, share which techniques you're using. Remember, you could find out more information on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com and you could see more daily plant inspiration on my Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn. If you'd like to learn more about my philosophy of living with plants, then pick up a copy of my latest book, How to Make a Plant Love You. Cultivate green space in your home and heart. And if you're looking for more research-based, tactical houseplant care and cultivation information, then head over to houseplantmasterclass.com. It's a thorough online audiovisual course disseminated over the course of a month covering houseplant growing, care, and cultivation, and chock full of engaging imagery, videos, text, and charts.